All right. Welcome to Irrelevant and Illiterate. I'm Oatmeal. That's Dumb Dumb. <laughs> we don't care what episode number this is. Mm-mm, I never do. At all. But uh, I got one. Sort of off. I want to give a shout to two podcasts done by friends of mine that I want other people to check out. One is called Getting It Out Podcast, done by my good friend Dan Crayley. He's a real funny guy. He interviews some really good bands. And it's available pretty much anywhere podcasts are available. And the next one is called The Where It Went Podcast, done by an old buddy of mine named Greg Pollard. And the premise of his podcast is he interviews Revelation Records bands. It's like pretty much a whole podcast dedicated to Revelation Records. All eras of Revelation. Like the 88 style, the, the rock and roll style, the weirdo style. And he gets some pretty good gets on there and some pretty good interviews. Hmm. So, And that's also available wherever you can get podcasts. So check those two out after, of course, you download the fucking sensation that is this. Subscribe to it and all that. Oh, yeah, comment. Oh, and also there's this other one. Um, Thank you for your services podcast starring the probably the master of entertainment, Matt. (laughs) I don't know what his last name is because I just don't care what his last name is but he's a short king and it's true boy. he's a little guy yeah future guest of this pod <laughs> eventually um if i can convince him i found something in the dream journal that i forgot to bring up last week and so i don't remember why it was funny but reading it it did make me laugh it just said your mom's so fat she got a dress made out of dinner recipes it's not a good joke at all. It's stupid, though. But <laughs> It's funny. <laughs> I was uh, probably giggling about it really hard at, a, like, 3 in the morning. It's probably fucking hilarious. <laughs> but while we're on this tangent, let me ask you a question. Mm-mm. How many motor- Harley-Davidson motorcycles do you think you see on a regular basis? Sometimes it's, like, one a day. And that's, really? not, even, that's not even when it's when it's not nice out. When it's nice out, I see multiple a day. Really? Hmm? Oh, because for me, it's pretty much one a month, maybe. Oh, you don't get out much. Oh, yeah, it is true. But now I want you to think about this. How often on a... How regular a basis do you see Harley Davidson merch? Oh, way more. Way more than the motorcycle to a, a stag like a disproportionate degree. Yeah, like I see, like I f- frequent coffee establishments a lot. Every time I walk into one, there's at least one hillbilly, or honestly, dudes that look like me wearing Harley Davidson gear. I'm like, not that many people in the world can have Harleys. Otherwise, like the the roads just be chocked with them. You, like you wouldn't be able to get fucking down the street. Without like like going constantly, so remember that South Park. Yeah, that's what I was <laughs> quoting there. Yeah, it's like people, <laughs> people don't think we're cool. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's like so. I'd say for every twenty Harley Davidson sweatshirts I see, I see a Harley Davidson motorcycle. So that means there's at least nineteen posers out there at any given. Within like a ten mile radius of me at any at any time. More than that, like that is that's pretty bad, dude. I oh, mean, the poser, the the poser proportion. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many more posers. And like, could you imagine just being like some fucking dude who works for Harley doesn't really pay attention to numbers and he just walks around and sees all these hoodies and shit and hats and stuff. He's like, dude, we are fucking killing it. Then he goes and looks at the actual numbers and he's like. <laughs> We sold five. <laughs> we sold five. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was a fucking weird thing that I see tons and tons of their merch, but not as much as their actual product. I think you don't it's, hmm? see that with any other product, really. No, because the only companies that go hard like that with swag are companies like Marlboro. And you know those people are cashing in their cigarette points for that <laughs> shit. Your, your j- jackets and fucking. I think at one point there was a tent. If you had, oh, yeah. if you had so many like, they, they had a catalog. Yeah, so much shit you could get with cigarette credit, basically. 
it was one of the funniest things I ever saw. Um, uh, uh, the the bull, Rick to Life, had was selling uh, twenty five to Life and Come and Correct hoodies at a show we played with him. This is like twenty years ago, and so I picked up. I looked at one of the twenty five to Life hoodies because I really liked it, and it was printed on a Marlboro hoodie. Really? Yeah. That's funny. That's fucking hysterical. <laughs> I would love to find Marlboro Marlboro blanks to print anything on. That's funny. I guess he had like a found a way to get the design over whatever it is like I think it maybe it was just like a pocket design on the hoodie or something, but it was definitely a Marlboro hoodie. It That's said so Marlboro funny. on the tag. Which is weird. I figured Marlboro would just get like through the loom hoodies and just throw their logo on it, but apparently they have an in house seamstress too. Or sweatshop, yeah, more like, like Jesus Christ. It was awesome. I was like, this motherfucker. <laughs> to not detract from the Harley Davidson thing, I have a Sisters of Mercy shirt inside, like an old one yeah. that was printed on a Harley Davidson blank. Yeah, I still have. I I took the tag off, but I kept it. I kept the tag. It just said Harley Davidson on the fucking. On the neck tag. Yeah, it was a Harley Davidson brand shirt, Sisters of Mercy. How? How much, how much more stoked would you have been if it said, you know, Sisters of Mercy and had whatever artwork on the front, but on the back it had, like, hauling ass, chick, <laughs> chicken in heads, or whatever. If you, if you can read this, the bitch fell off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and just fucking Sisters of Mercy just co-opted the Harley Davidson, like, lifestyle just for that one shirt design. That Inc- would have been fucking great. Incredible. That would have been awesome. I would have honestly bought one, too, and I'm not a huge Sisters of Mercy fan, but... Why not? But I like them, but it's not like a band I would seek out merch from. Uh, fair, you know what I mean? Fair enough. But if I came across a Sisters of Mercy like hoodie that said like haul an ass on the back and had like an eagle on the back of it, I'd have been like, yeah, I'll take two. That one. <laughs> I'll take two. <laughs> oh, I fuck. Just, that's fucking great. That's, I think more bands should do that. I, w- I wish it were possible. I'd do it for this oh. podcast. <laughs> Dude, you could like even do it as like a service too. Think about this. Like, Think about like your local pizza shop, right? They have, like, they'll probably sell t-shirts, and on the back it just says, you know, like, fuck faces pizza, and here's the phone number, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> now, if you just print a band shirt and just put your logo on the front and on the back, it still has, like, the pizza shit, your front, you're doing That's something cross for your promotion. band. It's cross-promotion. Because everybody likes pizza. That's high-level marketing. Exactly. And, you know. It's word of mouth, if yeah, nothing I'm else. Yeah, dude. Shh. Everybody can shine. Is, you know, damn well, your local pizza store that actually sells shirts of, like, their sh- shit has at least three boxes of unsold shirts. You're like, look, here's what I'll do. I'll take these. I'll print my band's logo on the front before we go on tour. And when we get back... <laughs> Who's going to buy their we'll pizza? Do a, we do a percentage. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just spitballing here. I'm just fucking spitballing. You're playing... A, All right, Don Lemon? You're playing in Billings, Montana. <laughs> no one's going to fucking be like, oh, we should try fuck faces sometime. Which one? Wilmington or Ellesmere? Fuck. They'd probably go to Wilmington. It's the, <laughs> it's the more known city. <laughs> yeah, guess. but what if it did, though? Uh, All of a sudden, like, yo, dude, can I just have one, like, shipped out to me, dude? It becomes, <laughs> or, or better yet, it becomes a destination. Yeah, can we have DoorDash by helicopter? Next thing, <laughs> next thing you know, Guy Fieri is showing up. I hate the way you just said Fieri. That's that's how his, his, he says his name. I don't give a fuck. That guy doesn't deserve to have his last name said correctly. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Yes, his last name does. is... His last name is stupid. He's a good man. I have a stupid last name. I hate when people pronounce it correctly. It's the worst thing ever. Just fuck it. I don't have anything else from the Dream Journal, do I? I got something. It's going to fuck you up, dude. What? It's going to fuck you up. We have a regular fucking segment on here about my favorite website in the entire world. The Internet Adult Film Database. IAFD.com. Are you familiar? I am. Oh. I sure am it's by like now. IMDB for people that have way too much time on their hands <laughs> and semen on their knuckles. Now, this one's got a lot of twists and turns to it, but I sent you the picture, didn't I? Mm-hmm. I did. This is Sonny Landum. Familiar with his work, are you? Landum. Sonny Landum. Well, let me give you a refresher here. Sonny Landum, also known as Bill Ashley and Tex Miller. Hmm. It's pretty good, right? Their names are sounding... It's ringing a bell, but I don't know it why. Is, it is, isn't it? 
<clears throat> maybe you've heard of him and you know such great ones as Big Abner, Big Thumbs, <laughs> Abigail Leslie is back in town. <laughs> oh, and let's not forget Ganja Express, Honey Cup, Illusions of Love, Love Bus, Misbehaving. Oh, dude, Misbehaving. Now, these are some great, some great films. You know what I mean? And he's quite a stud. Now. I ask you, how does Sonny party? He looked to me like a sort of WWE wrestler. Mm-hmm. Retired. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He looks like he could go either way. But my gut is telling me he parties hard. Hard gay? I think he does both. Incorrect. He's Fuck. straight as a goddamn arrow. Fuck! That was my first instinct. I should have just done with it. Fuck. Now, this is where it gets fucking wild, bro. First off, we know he's not a top or a bottom. He's just a fucking straight shooter. Yep. Now, Boring. second point. I know, right? Psh, fucking lame Is he alive or dead? He's got to be dead. Let me tell you a very long story about Sonny Landham, okay? He's dead. You know why you recognize his name? Because he transitioned after his stint in pornography. Playing in such real movies as 48 Hours. You ever heard of it? Nick Nolte? And I Murphy? have. I have. Uh, have you ever heard of a little movie called Predator? Uh, yeah. Do you remember Billy the Tracker? Mm. Got his spine removed from his back with his skull intact. Yeah, the classic scene, yeah. That is Sonny Landham. Really? Yes. So, he pivoted from pornography into real film. Real. Oh, yeah, real film, dude. Are you fucking air-quoting Predator? I'm, I'm, real, I'm, I'm oh. air-quoting r- the term oh. real film. Because porn is very real. He also starred in the fucking blockbuster of all blockbusters, Action Jackson. I know the name, but I've never seen it. You're so young and stupid. Me. So, yeah. <laughs> Sonny, now, afterwards... when you and Also, when you first said transitioned, I thought you meant the other way. What other way is there to transition, Tom? To become th- another gender, perhaps. People do that? <laughs> what? <laughs> you really don't Fuck, get out much. Fucking science is kooky, man. As long as you're not wearing <laughs> Harley shirts, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anywho... After his stint as an actor, he got into motherfucking politics. Because, as you know, the cast of Predator, a lot of them went into politics. It is it is a strange throughway. It's very true, dude. <laughs> strange throughway from Predator is, to dude. politics. It is, dude. Jesse, Vent- Jesse the Body Ventura became a governor of Minnesota. Uh, Arnold, the motherfucking man Schwarzenegger. The governator, you could say. That's exactly right. In 2003... Landum ran in the Republican Party primary election for the post of Governor of Kentucky, hoping to repeat the success of his Predator castmates, Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura and California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. He based... Oh, Schwarzenegger. Sorry. He based his candidacy on opposition to an amendment which endorsed the Kentucky Family Court, saying his bad experiences at the hands of Family Court had convinced him it was for the benefit of lawyers rather than the families and children. So he ran on that. That's what he ran on, you know what I mean? Fair enough. And he didn't win. <laughs> he didn't win. He didn't get the, he didn't get the partisan nom- nomination. Robbed, Now, probably. in January of 2004, Landon announced his candidacy for the 27th State Senate District of the same fucking state. You yeah, know? go figure. And uh, he tried to... Up- know who he tried to upseat? Uh, motherfucking... M- Mitch McConnell. Mitch goddamn McConnell. Mm-hmm. That's right. I was guessing. That bubble neck motherfucker <laughs> had Billy... Billy from Predator, after him, dude. And McConnell was just like, nah. He just fucking smoked him. Now. God damn it. Imagine, oh, if he could have unseated the turtle, uh, maybe maybe this would be a different country by now. I mean, it's like the tortoise and the hare all over again, but it's this time it's the tortoise and the Indian guy, or the, sorry, Native American guy from Predator. I'm Mitch McConnell. It's like, what's got Billy so spooked? trees <laughs> god damn it anyway <laughs> july two, july 2008 landham appeared on the political radio show the weekly filibuster and was calling 
for the bombing of all Arab people okay. outright. To send them back to the sand in which they were born from. Is this a quote? Yes. And refer to the, the ethnic group as camel dung shovelers. Oh my god. And when questioned on this, suggested using the epithets raghead and camel jockey instead. Oh my god. The Kentucky Libertarian Party asked Lanham to withdraw his nomination. And so, then he goes on again and says, I call for the outright bombing them back into the sand until they surrender. And, they, and if they don't surrender, then you can continue the war. Because if you don't, you will never have peace in the United States. Hmm. And the, and the libertarians yeah. wonder why people don't take them seriously. Well, how bad do you have to be for the libertarians to be like, you know what, dude? Let's, 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 bounce. Yeah. let's, let's bounce out. All right. <laughs> now. you got to be a real fucking. <laughs> his story gets even more fun. All right, Landon married five times. Has five. Five times. It's four kids. After being convicted on federal charges of making threats and obscene phone calls to his wife, Landon spent three years in prison. However, the U.S. Sixth Court, Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, reversed the conviction in May of 2001. So this was all before he decided to run for office. Uh, he did a three-year bid. Now, to answer your question. On whether my my he guess is alive or dead. Mm -hmm. Landon died on August seventeenth, ah. twenty seventeen, at age seventy six from I... congestive heart failure. R.I.P. to the wild man. I knew it. Not only could he not take down the Yatwa, <laughs> not only did the jungle claim him, but he got fucking smoked by Mitch McConnell. So I would, you know, give one to the sky, but you got smoked by Mitch McConnell, dude. You, just to expire. Just, yeah, just your God. legacy is fucking spent. So that's not where you saw that one going, is it? Not at all. Yeah. Talk about a star that burnt out. And Fuck. The way I came across <laughs> it, this is how I came across all this information. I love pornography, as you know. What? I do. I love. You kidding me? I was watching a. I like retro. When I go on X Fades, I like looking at retro, like old movies. I was watching one called Slippery When Wet. Oh. And there's a guy in his. What's it about? <laughs> It's about uh, slip and fall scams at uh, pizza stores. <laughs> it happened to fuck faces once, dude. They always fucking bankrupt them. Anyway, so this dude's <laughs> piping this chick out, and I'm like, I fucking know that guy. I'm like, that's who the fuck is that guy? I was like, I've seen that fucking guy before. I know that guy. Who is that guy? It's killing me. And my headphones just crapped out. Oh, sorry. But uh, I was like, who the fuck is that? So I went to the trusty website. IAFD.com, not sponsored, but we would like to be. And I was like, holy shit. Holy shit. And I was like, his name's Sonny Landon. I'm like, that's the dude from Predator. So then I go onto his Wikipedia page, just make sure it's the same Sonny Landon and not some other Sonny Landon that also happens to be Native American and look exactly like Sonny Landon from Predator. And then, sure the fuck enough. Sure enough. He was a pipesman for a good, like, I think he did like six years. As a pipesman, before he transitioned... Oh, was that a right word? Transitioned? Not from chick pivoted. to... Pivoted. Not from dude to chick. Oh, pivoted, that's the word. It's a better word. Good job. So he pivoted to become an, uh, you know, an actor. <laughs> went from a, went a from, thespian. Went from a pipesman to a thespian. <laughs> so I was just like, damn. So now I'm wondering... Because I know Stallone did some fuck work, too. Oh yeah, career. yes he did. Alleg he did a I long think he only time. Did ago. like one or two, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering how many action heroes have that Dixman skeleton in their closet. Hey, tune into the next IAFD segment and maybe you'll find out. And how great would it be the next time, like you know, you're you're just fucking JL went to internet porn. You're like, hey man, that guy's a real go getter. And then ten years later, all of a sudden, you know, like the next Marvel franchise is announced, and there he is, right next to Captain America, and you're just like. I fucking believed in you 10 years ago <laughs> when I was fucking filling a tube sock and I believe in you now. Let me, you, <laughs> I mean, I, that's fucking great, right? Oh, dude. You were there for me when I was cranking my least or at my fuck at my lowest. Fuck it. Hey, that was, I'll crank that for was you super, now. That was very, <laughs> I mean, cause you've seen the opposite when like people's careers just take a fucking nosedive and they have to start, Doing like you know, 
nude spreads and Playboy was shit like back in the day. A lot of people would resort to it. So it's kind of nice to see that someone went started as a fucksman or a pipesman or pipe woman and just tran uh, sorry pivoted to stage and screen. You don't see that much. You don't see it go that way. Well, you could even argue they were already on stage and screen, but maybe a different screen. Or maybe there's porn that's actually on stage, and it's like some real hipster shit. I wonder where that... Mm, like, hipsters only watch porn that's done on, like, <laughs> on like little cafe stages. <laughs> I had a thought, and then I, I immediately deleted it. I didn't even want to finish it. Like, could you imagine, like, some dude just <laughs> braised cum on some chick's back, and all of a sudden some dudes will wax mustaches, or it's like... <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. I had the same thought. <laughs> just like that, and dude. <laughs> hipster porn is so good, dude. <laughs> they ride on their bicycles home. <laughs> but like, he goes like, "You like that bitch?" They're like, "Oh, oh, no, no, that's no, not cool. No, no, what are you doing here? Hey, that's not cool." Yeah, they just fucking. I'm performing, and they just you know they they knock their paps blue ribbon over and just fucking storm out of that place. But every. <laughs> But he was like, you like that, my equal? Everybody's like, oh, hmm, hmm. He's the master. He's the master of his craft. <laughs> if he's the master of his craft, but a woman could do it too. You know, I'm all about hipster porn. I'm going to start finding a way. I'm going to find a way to make that shit. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. i got to find a guy named Will Way now. <laughs> <laughs> this is an untapped market. Like, it's like, could you hurry up and come? I got some homebrew I'm making down in my basement distillery. You know, just like, <laughs> Like it, somehow it's all cuck porn. <laughs> can, can we can we hurry this up? My yeast is about to rise on the sourdough starter. Yeah. It's all some dude just like you know standing in the corner while his girlfriend gets fucked by a barista. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally fine with this. This is 2023. <laughs> Put your fucking mask back on, white bitch. <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> Where's your Vax card, you fucking slut? <laughs> like, oh. How great would that be? If some, it's just like some girl, just like, one in the ass, one in the fucking twat, one in the mouth. Then one of the guys is like, wait, she's not Vax? And just like, ew, and just like tiptoes off. recoil. Tiptoes, tiptoes off, like, grody. <laughs> like, oh. Like, I was totally going to, like, make you throw up on my dick, but now, ugh. I would never get the COVID off my balls. That ah, fucking... Dude, woke woke hipster porn is a market I think I'm going to... I'm going to dip my toes in, dude. You could retire off of this idea be, wanna... because you know why? What? If you get... If you get in, like, the subreddit... Start in, like, the like some, some real grassroots subreddit, like, viral marketing, and you right. could tap into those, like, Daily Wire, like... Like, uh, those hardcore, uh, right people, like the ones who would buy m- merch from the Proud Boys or something. Yeah. And they'd be like, yo, check this out. Next thing you know, you're, you, you can be, you could be posting clips. You uh, can fucking, you'd do really well. What is this woke bullshit? I, I'm, dude. And it's I, complete woke satire. They would eat it up. I want to be the Wes Anderson of pornography. What, and make stupid-looking, campy yes. shit? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be the Wes Anderson of pornography. What would your uh, directorial name be, then? Would you take a surname, or just do... No, I'd probably go with the same name I was, I was going to use for any time I'd have these a fake name, and that's Tex Message. <laughs> that's what I'll go for that one. Tex Text Message. message yeah. <laughs> it's like, have you seen the new Message film? It's provocative. You're Alluring. <laughs> Your last name will ring out in film festivals. Exactly, It'll dude. be a name that people drop. Yeah. Of like move, like directors they watch. Yeah. People like future guest Martello. I was watching the newest message. I won't even tell him. I'll just sit. I'll just sit back and smirk to myself. Mm-hmm. Like, did you like it, Mr. Martello? Did you like it? <laughs> tell us more. Tell us, cinephile. <laughs> I can't wait to have him on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for. I'm yeah. really looking forward to that episode. I'm Enough gonna, about that. They gotta wait for that shit. Yeah. Not give them the free. Mm-mm. Not give them the free free. Mm-mm. What's going on the news today, Tom? Oh boy. I was struggling on how to order these because oh. some of them are really funny. 
but I think I, 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 I think I figured it out. So, just I'll start. Ones that take place in Florida, put at the bottom of the stack. Uh, let's see. One, two. None of them are from Florida. What? Oh, they're gonna be terrible. It's like man gets oh, free Slurpee. Just, <laughs> just you wait. Uh, Georgia man, close to Florida. <laughs> North Florida was accused of shoplifting at Walmart, and he was caught with thirty-seven pounds of marijuana in his trunk, trunk of his car. Uh, I thought, I thought you were gonna say in his sweatpants. I'm like, that's pretty sick. So he was busted for shoplifting at at the Walmart because he was uh, doing what they call skip scanning, where oh. he's in the self checkout and he. Like scan one, skip the next. Scan do a one, little, skip the next. You know, a little one for me, one for you. Yeah, I used to work at a type thing. Yeah. I mean, it's not gonna stop me from doing it, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> at Acme. At <laughs> Pike Creek. The uh, the Walmart cop noticed he hadn't paid for several things, and that totaled around 165 bucks. So. They had the. Uh, they had the go ahead to follow him to his car, and because they appear, I guess some, uh, depending on where you are, police officers will actually be stationed at Walmart's. Sometimes, yeah. So they follow him to his car, and they say, "We got to search your car." They tell him to pop the trunk. They found fr- uh, three duffel bags full of vacuum sealed uh, bags of marijuana, totaling thirty seven pounds. Hmm. So he was charged with possession. Intent to distribute trafficking, theft by shoplifting, and possession of drug-related objects, possession of Schedule One or Two controlled substance, yada yada yada. Well, maybe that Walmart had that bring your own bag policy, like most supermarkets do now, and those are the only bags he had around in Georgia. I don't know. So he had to like you know move the weed aside a little bit in the bag to fit in some pork chops. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, these are desperate times, dude. What Turtles are dying. Are they? I don't know. Mitch McConnell's still alive. <laughs> until oh, when still Sonny Landham comes back from the dead. And With a fucking has straw. His, <laughs> has his revenge. He just he pokes him right in his fucking nose. <laughs> right in his stupid turtle nose. <laughs> he's like, oh, Sonny Landham, I thought I'd seen the last of you. And he's like, mm, think, trees, they're think, moving. <laughs> think again, McConnell. <laughs> the trees. He just, he just gags like to death. There's, some, there's something out there. His name's Mitch. Mm-hmm. More like yeah. bitch. That's it. That story stunk. Well, uh, that it was just the warm up. Oh, okay. Uh, an airline worker died after being quote ingested into the engine of a plane. Those engines do be hungry, dog. <laughs> as a as a past guest, Dave Janice says, "The unfair port strikes again." Mm-hmm. Indeed, this is a perfect example of that. An airline ground crew worker in Montgomery, Alabama, died after being ingested into the engine of a plane, a parked plane, on Saturday. And the airport grounded all flights for five hours after the incident. It occurred on New Year's Eve. Uh, pe- let's see. Uh, th- uh, the 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 victim was a 34 year old mother of three. Ooh. So, gone too yeah. soon. Uh, no. Hmm? Let me ask you this. I'm sorry. You want to finish the article, or let's see. before I say something really stupid? Uh, president of a local uh, communication workers union raised a GoFundMe. They raised over seventy two thousand dollars for the family. You figure they just could have just gotten a shitload of tape and put it back together. No, but um, <laughs> let me ask you this. Like, have you ever been to an air show of any type? No, I would, I would not you know what it is, though, right? I sure do. Now, I'm from ever, Delaware. I know what they are. Yeah. Have you ever seen, like, when, like, fighter planes and shit, they'll, like, um, decal or detail whatever, like, shark teeth on the front of it and stuff like that? Yeah. Now, jets like that, if you get sucked into the engine, should you have seen it coming? I mean, it's a vicious shark jet. I mean, I would. you shouldn't get too close to shark jets. Now, if it was just a regular old like, like jet liner, you know, like a passenger jet, it was a commercial. Yeah, plane. that you know, it's unsuspecting. You know, it's tragic. But if you get near one of those jet planes that has like shark teeth on it, or something like that, you're like, yo, you should have known that was coming. It has teeth. Yeah, you can't even get close to those things. Yeah. It's too fucking loud. Yeah, and but, it's a shark. Yeah, yeah, it has a huge fin on top. Exactly, of it. dude. 
I mean, would you get next to a quiet shark? No, you wouldn't. So why would you fucking get close to one? It's like... <laughs> whatever jet noises. The entire time. It's fucking jet noises, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, maybe it's just a real shark, you know, trying to play possum by convincing me it's a jet. And you're like, no, it's still a fucking shark, dude. You should be careful. It's, <laughs> it's like, dude, getting too close to an airplane that has shark teeth on it is like, it's just stupid. It's like just assuming a dog that's wearing sunglasses isn't cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, you know you're going to be convinced, like, proven wrong. Because only cool dogs wear sunglasses. That's the only ones, so, yeah. I th- so, if this lady was like, it was, it feels like a, a fighter jet with, like, shark teeth on it. This lady had it coming and she didn't deserve her three kids. But since you said it was a commercial airliner, it's very tragic. And, mm-hmm. uh, I've, what's her name? Courtney something. Courtney something, eh? Yep. Give me your name. Courtney Edwards. Courtney Edwards. So, go to GoFundMe. Look up Courtney Edwards and donate to her three kids. Her mom was cut down by the devil that is the unfair port. Hashtag unfair port. Also, wait a minute. S- stay away from any jet planes that have shark's teeth. Do you what? think... Uh-oh. What do you got, dude? Is there a connection... Give it to me, dude. ...between shark plane <gasps> and shark NATO? Is there something there? I need to know. So, like, I need do you to think know. the plane's, like, doing, like, little loop-de-loops and, a, and shit like that, and all of a sudden it just whips up a Sharknado? <sighs> ingested. The word they used was ingested. Yeah, you don't say that with machinery. Like, you didn't get sucked into, like, a steel mill or whatever thing. Nah, man. You she got, got... You got mauled. She got aten. She got aided it. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> Damn, what if Helen Hunt was just chasing jet planes that entire movie of Twister? It's like... And it like, it was like, oh, there's a... That, that Twister just brought up a cow. That's not really a cow. It's just a jet plane with black and white spots. Exactly. Dude, jet planes are fucking deceitful as fuck, dude. And you shouldn't trust them. So, something needs to be done about these. Like, everybody's like, yo, birds aren't real. I was like, have you seen have these, you- these sharks that fly through the sky? <laughs> There's sharks <laughs> flying through the sky in in war zones with missiles attached to them. And nobody's like saying what the f to this. <laughs> this this is a plague, dude. This is how it starts, dude. This is how this is how the sixth sun starts in the Mayan calendar and we all die. A classic oh, fuck, dude. Government lie just like the birds. The bird they not only the birds the Jets as well. The, what if the... Oh, dude. Just know that... Basically, it, just don't trust anything in the sky. Uh-uh. If you're getting... In, if, if if something is trying to get you in the sky, it's deceit. It's like that movie Nope, dude. You shouldn't trust clouds. Exactly. So, Jordan Peele's on to some shit, dude. He always has been. I, I guarantee you his next fucking movie is going to be about shark planes. <laughs> And it's gonna be him or like some or that dude that's in all his movies. <laughs> He's gonna be at like an air show, right? Just fucking beating down a corn dog, just fucking enjoying his day. And all of his corner of his eyes you see this sick fucking jet just parked out there just chilling. He's like, Yeah, I wanna get closer to that jet, get a picture taken with it. And then he's, his eyes get to the nose of the plane and he sees those gleaming incisors. And know what he says? Nope. nope. Exactly. Nope too. Nope, too. It's going to be a blockbuster. Almost as good as the blockbusters made by Text Message, who they call the Wes Anderson of pornography. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Sharknados, shark airplanes, shark submarines, tsunamis. Shark vehicles are causing all natural disasters. Now, if we could only find something to blame for earthquakes. Shark bulldozers. <laughs> shark, bulldozers with shark's teeth painted on their little bucket thing are causing all the fucking earthquakes. Submarines <sighs> down in the fucking bottom of the ocean going boom, boom, <laughs> boom. With shark's teeth painted on their teeth. 
They're the ones causing tsunamis and killing all those lovely Japanese people. And no one's going to do anything about it except the band Creep Out. They're going to defend Japan against the submarine attacks. Mm-hmm. And I endorse them, dude. I stand I stand with Creep Out. I stand with almost any extreme uh, Japanese band yeah. at this point. Because if anybody's going to take down Shark Submarine, it's going to be those guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, they already know how to take down like Kaiju and shit like that. <laughs> So what's Thank a fucking, God. so what's a fucking shark sub going got against those guys? They know dragons, dude. They just be like, "Yo, dragon, go fuck up that submarine <laughs> with the with the chomp chomps on it," and the dragons just be like, "You got it," and just go fucking handle it. What did you just do? Little snot rocket. Don't pay you attention. Had to turn to me. everything off to do that. I, I I wanted to mute the microphone to. Are you fucking not subject baby. the listeners to it? Why? It's not like you shit yourself, eh. or did you? Is that all that's happening in the news today? No, I got a little. I got a little bit more. You got some boogers on your hands too. I bet. Mm, I'm gonna eat them. Wipe them on your jeans like a fucking man. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, did you know? Speaking yes. of boogers, if you pick a dry booger and you roll it and you flick it, they disappear. Never to be found again. That's not true. It is true. That's a, that's not true at all. It sure, it is. Next to my bed. <laughs> I have a box fan, because I'm one of those weirdos that has to sleep with a fan on him at all times, right? First thing I do when I wake up in the morning, if I got time to, you know, fuck around, like, like 10 minutes before the alarm goes off, whatever, I will sit in bed and pick my nose, and I'll roll that booger up, and you know what I do with it? Flick it. Right into that fucking box fan, and you know what I hear you 10 hit- seconds later is, tick, zit, and it just flies off somewhere else in my room, and I giggle like a silly little boy I am. Yeah, but once it's somewhere else, it's never to be found again. It's because it biodegrades super quick. I see. It's like a skin cell. Dude. This is what I'm getting at. Now, see, I thought you're talking like as soon as it leaves your nail, no. it just disappears into the ether. No, I mean I've seen, I've I've heard boogers that I've flicked. Unless, huh? Microscopic shark, shark jets <laughs> shark are flames. snatching your boogers out from midair, completely negating their trajectory to the box fan, and just like. <laughs> <laughs> just munching. So, like, you're sitting there flicking boogers. Like what? And you're thinking, you're hearing, like, the, the booger hit the fan. What you're actually hearing is a nom, 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 nom of the shark jet. That's what I thought, yeah. Fuck. Dude, I'm, t- I'm telling you, I'm onto something with this shark thing. Damn. If it goes full circle, a mother of three might get sucked into my box fan. <laughs> R.I.P. Give to her a GoFundMe. For real. Courtney Edwards, you're... Courtney Edwards. Rest in power. Rest in power more than Sonny Landham. <laughs> So there was a San Antonio police officer who had uh, multiple complaints filed against him. For Shocker. boogers? No, for uh, things like, you know, little little cop things. Oh, shooting black people. Assault. Oh, uh, you know, wife beating. What Domestic violence. You know. Oh, yeah. What, uh, what finally got him fired from uh, his police precinct was giving a homeless man a shit-filled sandwich. Mm-hmm. That's all Mm-mm-mm. I could do is shake my head in disappointment. Mm-mm-mm. The city the city manager said uh, he's unsure of how much online scrutiny the city conducted in addition to his background check. I know they do a background check, they said. I'm not sure how strong it is or if it <laughs> applies to his social media because he was, let's just say, questionable online. It would have had to be a steak roll. What? What steak roll? The shit sandwich. Um, but. Like two slices of Wonder Bread couldn't hold a turd. Oh, right. Maybe. It would have to be a baguette or a steak roll. I was thinking some kind of baguette or French, like yeah. a French, uh, French bread, some kind of roll. It couldn't yeah. be like a two individually sliced anything. It would have to be something that's just sliced in the middle and opened. I mean, look at him. He's a piece of. He's a piece of garbage. He's not... He's Unless not, it was some little... Oh, with his little stupid grin. Yeah. And his baby's first mustache. Ugh. He's not a ciabatta guy. Oh, what a... F- no, no, no chance. And it's probably not even a good turd. It's probably some little fucking rabbit pellet. Fucking loser. No, nah, I thought that was fucking despicable, but... Yeah, that's pretty... The, uh... The I don't search. even want to make jokes about it. I'm just really kind of like, how did... To feed somebody. And also, like... You're a homeless, not to like knock the homeless dude, what was happening to him was horrible, don't get me wrong, but it's like, you're a homeless dude, you shit 
in public, on the ground, all the time, you should be pretty much a shit smith and know a turd when you see it. I thought of it like this, though. So that means, it's, A, it was probably a steak roll, and he probably garnished that fucker. I'm talking tomatoes, fucking lettuce. He- here's the thing, though. A homeless person is not going to exactly file a complaint. I think he might have had to get, he would have had to have gotten caught somehow. Oh, I'd say probably the, his partner or whatever ratted him out, or if they were reviewing the, what's that, that chest titty cam thing? Body, yeah, yeah, body you cam. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But it's like, because think about it, even if a homeless guy just goes into a fucking police station like, Officer, this guy gave me a shit sandwich. You're like, yeah, whatever, dude, get out of here. Exactly, shoo, shoo. Yeah. He would, I, th- I feel like he must, I wish there was more or, in this article. even better, if he gave the guy a shit sandwich, guy realizes it it's a shit sandwich and stabs him with a hepatitis needle. Or just his dirty old fingernails gives him hepatitis that way. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying a lot of homeless people have hepatitis. Oh, a, uh, I almost forgot. A search, uh, uh, like, in his background check, this is not his first poo-poo incident. Ah. Uh. Classic. Classic poo-poo guy. The search also y- yielded stories about separate incidents that actually led to his permanent removal from the the San Antonio Police Department. In that, in this case, investigators found he left an unflushed. This is printed an unflushed turd in the women's restroom at a police station, <laughs> and smeared brown gunk on the toilet seat after a female officer asked him or asked the staff to keep the area clean. So he's been Jesus a he's Christ. been a poo poo rascal the whole time. Ugh. <laughs> but to subject a fucking poor homeless person to a shit sandwich, yeah, like it's despicable. Subject women to shit all you want. I mean, they deserve it. It's funny. They're an inferior sex <laughs> anyway, right? But homeless, it's like, come on, dude, have a heart. Well, I mean, then again, if he probably beats his wife, so giving smearing shit all over her. Other women's toilet seats, probably like kind of vanilla to him. I mean, this is a man who's never put the toilet seat down in his life. Oh god, he probably shits with the toilet seat up just out of spite. He's probably those dude, the dude that pulled people over on tra- train tracks. He's probably just a fucking prankster. What a fucking d bag. I think that makes it makes me mad is that picture is the mustache. Mm-hmm. That is such a like. It's like that one kid you, you knew in school that had the first thing you had a mustache. That's what yeah. that dude has. <sighs> he reminds me. <laughs> he reminds me of <laughs> of, a, <laughs> of a certain person we we have tried to start a band with. <laughs> with his evil fucking grin and furrowed brow. I could definitely see the outlaw. I could definitely see the fucking outlaw. I will not name him any further than that. I could definitely see the outlaw serving people turd <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> I mean, I could see the outlaw serving us turd sandwiches. Yeah. And I would just be like, what can I say, outlaw? You fucking got me. Got me again. <laughs> also, I'm not homeless. I just look this way. And smell this way. <laughs> yeah, that's just... God damn, dude. That's just... Eesh. Yeah. I mean, like, what could the fucking homeless dude possibly have done to provoke anything? Like, I've seen the homeless people do some pretty heinous shit. Yeah. But nothing that's really deserving of... No. I mean, look. Especially something like, that's a thought-out thing to do. Yeah. It's not like he's like, he was like there and he's farting through it at him. He was like... He had to go to the break room. He had to designate a piece of bread. Whatever to, it was. He had to get the bread first. Yeah, he had to facilitate bread. Unless he had just picked up a delicious Subway sandwich. Mm. Scooped all the stuff out. Either way, this is premeditated. If it was Quiznos, he probably toasted it. Mm, R.I.P. Quiznos. (laughs) We love the subs! It's like, Jesus (laughs) Christ, dude. Yeah, I got nothing on that guy, dude. Sorry, that guy's just a piece of shit. Fuck him. Literally. But... You are what you eat. I am interested in the logistics of... What he did, though. And I also want to know, did, like, the homeless guy bite into it? Or was he just like, look, man, I'm homeless, but I'm not 
fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. This is obviously a turd on a sub roll. Sir, my feet are wrapped in newspaper, but I am not an idiot. <laughs> and I will not take a bite out of this shit sandwich. What's that smell? Quiet. And this guy's is like, you eat the shit sandwich, you're getting locked up. And he's like, I would like to speak to your supervisor. <laughs> and that's what he did. And I just hope that's how justice was carried through. Yeah. But like one could hope. That guy will probably still have a job. A year from now. No, he was terminated. He was actually terminated oh. for that. That was the whole point. The, that was the whole point of the article. He was finally terminated because that was the last straw. See, if he had a shot an unarmed woman, he would have fucking kept his job and, you know, had a pension. Hey. You, it went, uh, you, some lessons you learn the hard way, I guess. Even racist hate doo-doo. <laughs> Ugh, fucking cops. All right, last story. An online petition... <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> There's an online petition to change the name of the capital city of Pakistan. Do you know what it is? No. They want to change the name of Islamabad to Islama Good. Aww. <laughs> well, it all depends. What llama are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> And llama is never good because it's always spitting at people. It's very rude. Nah. It's a very rude animal. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, petition, ah. the petition was started by a native of Bangladesh. In the description section for his petition on change.org, he wrote, Islam is good. Pakistan love Islam. Why Islam a bad? I'm guessing on the accent there. So That was very spot on. Don't, I, I don't thought, crucify me. I actually me. thought you were from there. I was like, what happened to Tom? Well... Isla- Islamabad uh, tra- uh, is it actually means city of Islam. It's a compound word consisting of two Urdu words, Islam and Abad. Yeah. Abad roughly tra- uh, translates to uh, location, right. so it essentially means city of Islam. There's a lot of cities out there that have the Abad at the end of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, the what shocks me about this? You say this person was was Ooh. Pakistani. Yes. It surprises me that that person is Pakistani and not a white woman. I know. That is some fucking dumb shit. Some house mom who's raising a kid named Chase would complain about. Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody in Islamabad complaining. I I can see the Facebook graphic now. Just like, what are you, fucking stupid? That's not (laughs) what that fucking means, dummy. It's like... (laughs) Like, that's not how our language works or any language actually works. It's like... Mm-mm. Definitely not Jesus Urdu. Jesus Christ. Like, did you know Manhattan isn't actually a guy with a hat? You know, it's like, <laughs> fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> there was more about, like... Let's see. People, like, people trying to name... Or people wanted to rename the city of... Like, in relate... Like, trying to relate this to... People wanted to rename the city of Columbus because... Christopher yeah. Columbus stinks. Was a, was a fucking hack. Hey, but you know what? Yeah. Ohio stinks too. Yeah. <laughs> so fuck him. If it was like Columbus, Maine, I'd say yeah, change it. But it's Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> the the petitioner also said uh, he also had a, a a brand new name in mind. Ooh. Flavorland. <laughs> I think your boy might get mad at that one. Guy Ferrari. <laughs> Whatever the fuck you said, you piece of shit Fieri but, uh, you know I met him how was it very uneventful he didn't he didn't make eye contact Ugh. I was just like yo Guy Fieri what's up man cause he was in Delaware his show did uh, Mrs. Rubino's I, see, I seen him on the wall yeah. and uh, a buddy of mine lived down the street and uh, he's like yo Guy Fieri's at fucking Rubino's you wanna go heckle him with me <laughs> I was like <laughs> No, because we're adults, but I will go yell some other random weird shit at him. <laughs> and just like, I wasn't, like, I didn't have anything good, like, cocked and ready to go. So I was like, yo, Guy Fieri, what's up? Like, that's all I had. Like, you know, rule of zero moment for me. Like, way to come out swinging, dickhead. Yeah, stupid. And, uh, and so I was like about five feet from him. I was like, Guy Fieri, what's up, man? And he's just like, hey. And just got in his car with his little entourage of people and just fucked off. Was it a flame car? No, it was just an SUV. Why it wasn't even a fucking convertible? No, dude. Or pff, probably wasn't even Guy. I, honestly, I was upset the, the fact that he chose Rubino's. I'm like, yeah, it's been around for 100 years, but it's like, it stinks. Stinks? 
Rubino sucks, dude. Rubino's does not suck. Yes, it does. Rubino sucks. I've been going there Wrong. since I was a little boy. It stinks. Eh, incorrect. Oh, fuck. I'll take SpaghettiOs over that place. Though, there's one positive thing I will give Rubino's. They used to serve... You, you get, I'd always get Virgin uh, Sh- um, Shirley Temples. Because, you know, I liked sugar. And they put little... Sh- so, you I what? Said, they put. I love sugar. <laughs> they put little uh, swords in the cherries. Oh. And those swords fit in the hands of my GI Joe figures. Wow. So going to Rubino's was kind of sick for that. <laughs> yeah, sick. Yeah. Sick auxiliary weapons. For and then you. as soon as we would leave there, we would go to this place that was in Trolley Square called Temptations. It was like a, a like a bougie ice cream shop. Mm. My mom would take us there. And I'm like, yeah, this place is dope as fuck. I can get ice cream with gummy bears on it. That sounds sick. Tempting. <laughs> you wouldn't change the name of that place would you <laughs> it's out of business go fuck yourself yeah, yeah rubino's is, is it's no you're a that's a goof you that's probably a, liked cafe bellissimo nah you're an olive garden boy aren't you no i would take rubino's over a lot of stuff around here that is Ugh. when we're talking we're ta- if we're talking strictly wilmington delaware type shit i would take rubino's over a lot of italian places Depending on what it was. I, if I just want a classic spaghetti and meatball, I'll go to Rubino's. Because you that... Get a, huh? We're kind of spoiled. In this area here, there's a lot of good Italian joints around here. The Dago's are pretty much fucking cornered Wilmington. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Like, any type of like Dago food you want, somebody within... A ten mile radius is going to make a good one for you. Yeah, throw throw pizza dough in the air; it'll yeah. land on a good Italian spot. It's not yeah. always all at the same spot, though. Like if you want a good lasagna, you want to go to one place. You want a good pizza, you go to another place. Yeah, you want a good, you know, like veal parm, you go to this place and everything. I'm fine with that. I don't need yeah. a I don't need an all around spot. Well, it's fine because it's all within ten miles of where both of us live. There is that too. So. This, this tiny area around here is yeah. useful for that. So if I live like a block away from Rubino's, I'd be stoked, you know, but I don't. So fuck it. There's I'll a be so- that guy. There's a solid place that we've gone to uh, down the oh. street from my dad's, that DeMeo's place. Yeah. All we had from there was pizza, but they have solid Italian Good, food. because their pizza tastes like Seasons Pizza. Mm. The pizza, eh, nothing to write home but, about. But it was in Smyrna, Delaware. You got to give it some fucking leeway. Diamond in the rough. You're not going to fucking find amazing pizza in, what is that, Kent County? Yep. Yeah, you're not going to find... Below the canal. Yeah. So Kent County has one thing, a prison and an Air Force base. Or (laughs) that's two things. Fuck me. (laughs) Good job, stupid. (laughs) Better school system so you know how to count things. Fat idiot. (laughs) Oh, God damn it. I hate myself. (laughs) Uh, What else is going on? Is that all you got for news? That was it for the news. Jesus Christ. Eh, we got about an hour. You want to fucking get into homework now, or? I mean, what else you got? That's pretty much it. I wrote down a couple things. Just thoughts that I had. Well, fucking lay them on me, dude. Well. Oh, you seem vexed, Tom. I was... Are you vexed? Yeah. Are you vexed? Mm, allegedly. <laughs> you have a big dick. Would you like to star in films? <laughs> I'm starting a new fucking uh, venture. My name's Tex. Text message. <laughs> nice to meet you, Tex. Nice shooting. <laughs> Which you, you ever th- saw yourself in film? Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in the Wawa parking lot, as we are in as Delawareans, yes. and I heard somebody driving by in a truck with like okay. Pantera blasting really loud. And Fuck it, yeah! And it just bummed me out a lot. It should. So I wrote that down. It made me really <laughs> upset. Especially because it was a good seven. No, it was it was before seven o'clock in the morning. So I was like, really now? Well, you got also got to figure the person that's bumping Pantera at seven a.m. in the morning is probably high as fuck on Adderall for one. Yep. Secondly, they just got fired from their job because they gave a shit sandwich <laughs> to a homeless guy. <laughs> you know, and they got to get home. When their wife wakes up at eight so they could beat the shit out of her. <laughs> and send the kids to school. And send the kids to school. <laughs> so he's on a time constraint. So what gets you more hype than far beyond driven? Ugh. You know? But yeah, I can't imagine a world where a sane non-cop, someone asks him, 
hey, do you like Pantera? And they're just like, yes. Ugh. That band gives me the shits. That band stinks. That I can agree with you on. Ugh. Let's see. Uh, you know what else sucks is being woken up out of a dead sleep at 1.30 in the morning by your dog violently barking at nothing outside. That's real good. Oh, my dog's constantly barking at nothing. Dude. So the other night, as he always does, I'm dead asleep because it's 1.30 a.m. And Elliot is at, at, the, at the, sliding, the sliding door barking at nothing outside. Do you have lights on in, your, in the room he's in? No. Because my dogs constantly bark at their own reflections. of Because you know, when it's dark out and you have lights on your house, you can't really see out. Mm-hmm. You can see your reflection. My dogs will bark at that constantly. No, thank, I think he's not that stupid, but he's he barks at shadows outside. And sometimes I'll go as far as to put his collar on him and let him go run out. And he'll run all over hell and creation outside. And he doesn't come back for a while. So I'm left standing there in the cold just waiting. It's because he heard Guy Fieri was at Rubino's. <laughs> he wanted to go see for himself. Like, Fieri, bu- what's up? He wanted to go see him for himself. And All right, I'll go back to my house him, now. <laughs> bite him on the balls or something. What'd you think of the plastic swords and the cherries and the fucking bird <laughs> Shirley Temple? All ten, right, I gotta go, dude. <laughs> ten out of ten. <laughs> ten out of ten, Shirley Temple. <laughs> ten out of ten would give to my G.I. Joes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Elliot do be having some G.I. Joes. He, he, he does. I, I luck out. Uh, my boys sleep through the night mostly. Thank God. They, when they, they do get up early as fuck though. <laughs> like no matter what your schedule is, they have the same sleep schedule every day. That sucks. Like say I got, you, you know, I have work the next day. They'll still start heading upstairs at like seven thirty at night. And you're just like, fuck. And you know, I, you can sit there and try to read or look at your phone or something. And they're just like, nah. They'll start pawing at the book. They'll paw at the phone. Ugh. And then... Like cats? Yeah. Ew. They're assholes like that. And then, like, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, like, like Zeke will just fucking, like, headbutt me. Just like... Boom, boom, like Dude, Alphonse does that shit in the morning. When yeah. uh, As soon as my alarm goes off, he's up in my bed, headbutting my phone. And I'm like, bro, I'm still trying to fucking shake the cobwebs off. I just opened my eyes. And he's like, meh. Probably because you fucking disturbing his sleep. Now, Fuck him. The cat, Stupid for cat. fuck's sakes, that dude's a fucking wild man. <laughs> He's up all night. You can hear him all night just, and just hauling ass. He does haul ass across the floor upstairs. He has a water bowl upstairs, because I have water bowls from upstairs and ones from downstairs. Yeah. And he constantly pushes it across the bathroom tile. Oh, so it's just like, but I think it's crazy is he can do all that and get it over like fucking like ledges from like the bathroom to the, the hallway outside. Yeah. You get it over that without spilling a drop. Does your cat knock like full on knock it over though? No. Al tries to do that. Moves it. Al will try his hardest to do that. In fact, we had to get like a, a water bowl that can't be flipped over. Uh, one of those ones with like the grip on the bottom. That's yes. Yes. And we put two full ass gallons of water next to it just for weight, and he still tries to flip that shit over. Now, you can't keep anything out, such as like uh, pill bottles, uh, candles, any kind of glass. You can't have anything on a counter in in the house. No, because cats are ca- <laughs> cats are suddenly like fuck that thing. Yeah. It should be on the floor. Like I don't. Blame them because, you know, fuck pill bottles, right? Yeah. Why are they or- <laughs> all <laughs> orange and shit? Fuck out of here, dude. Big pharma, my ass. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, like you're, yeah, your cats are just like, yo, fuck the Sackler brothers and just whack. There goes your, <laughs> there goes your clonopin across the kitchen floor. You know? It's like, I don't like that fucking glass. It's not part of a matching set. Just smacks it off into the sink. You're like, all right, man. Like, whatever you fucking say, dude. Thank God for those child safe lids and they don't spill everywhere oh god damn it if he knocked over like my bottle of clonopin and then the next morning i just wake up to a cat high as fuck, <laughs> oh, on, fuck. All, all clonied up dude holy shit honestly it'd probably be for the best he'd be chill it would be funny <laughs> it would he'd probably die but yeah his last fucking couple minutes would be fucking chill as fuck yeah his last hurrah <laughs> it's like how'd your cat die 
I don't want to well, say, but he went out fucking vibing. <laughs> <laughs> he was just fucking vibing. He was wavy as shit. He was just vibing. I was just like, yo, what's up with you, man? You don't look so good. And he's just like, ah. Mm. Just fucking reading a magazine, smoking a cigarette. Dude, next thing you know, you got to lay him flat on the floor and uh, and shoot him in the chest with an adrenaline needle. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. Shit. Starts hanging out with the wrong crowds. Just Then just ends up living on the streets. Next thing you know, there's a fucking cop handing him a hoagie roll with a third on it. <laughs> And it's like, how low can a cat get, dude? It's fucking real shit out there, man. Life is hard, dude. Especially for kitties. Mm -hmm. The last thing I had written down was that Joe List did have two specials come out in 2022. But But. uh, one of them was that YouTube special, This Year's Material. And the other one was a 2015 Comedy Central special that they re-released on their YouTube called Being Attacked by Panic. It was yeah. good, also. Just most of the shit is throwing that out there. Awesome. It was, it was, yeah. it was pretty fucking. He just good. wanted to prove me wrong, is what you're saying. The, he did have two specials come out last year. That's why yeah. I was confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He only, he only put out one, so I was still wrong. Mm-hmm. But that's why I was confused. But you, it was on your mind that much that you had to go look up the release dates of his specials. Well, when I was scrolling through doing our own homework, I was like, oh, there's that one I was thinking of, and I wrote oh. it down. And speaking of our homework, oh, we getting into it? Let's get into it because we had a lot. We fucking did, dude. Um, I'm like, a f- I'm personally a fan of this homework shit, though. Yeah, it, it gives you new shit. Yeah, and uh, so it doesn't always hit, but sometimes sometimes it does. You find some shit you never would have found other ways, and that's why I we suggested this bit from mm-hmm. the jump. Um, look, should we do Phil's? Well, Phil, last week we had Phil from the band Ground. Check out their album, Habitual Self Abuse, out now. Oh, on yeah. On Hibernation Records. That thrilling episode we had last yes. week with our, f- our fucking hilarious guest. <laughs> I don't think Phil's ever had a conversation with a human being before. <laughs> I love the boy. He's a cut I up. even overlooked the fact that he's Italian, but I thought he was asleep. But I, um, I did enjoy him, though. I like Phil yeah, quite Phil's a bit. a sweet boy. Um,. Do you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll start. All right. And we can we can bounce it back and forth, if you will. So Phil assigned us, or I, I, he tried to assign us one on, like, one and one. Yeah, but we both did them, right? We took them both. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to start both. with rank and file, sundown. Exactly. I gave this a 1.5 out of 10. I don't think I'm going to invite Phil back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did he All call right. it? Cowpunk? Now look. Cowpunk is uh, is a genre I don't like because I don't like country music at all. But I was like, okay, Cowpunk. I do like some. I do like the band Mud Honey, which is another yeah, somewhat Cowpunk band. Me too. Band. So, yeah. And and he was like, yo, it's kind of like Meat Puppets. I was like, I like a couple. I like a, a couple Meat Puppets songs. They're not, they're not my favorite, but you know, they have some good jams. So I made it a song and a half, and I was like, I see the cow, but I don't see the punk. I was like, this is just a country rock record. Yeah. I was kind of, like, I would get, like, a minute in. Like, I know other people that would like it, but neither of those people are in this room. And I, I though, I gave it a 3 out of 10 because I was having this sick turkey club while I was eating it. <laughs> it was really good. Shout out to Bacchetti's Deli on Kirkland Highway. And it was like this, oh, dude, it was a fucking... They got a solid Reuben, too. It was an onion roll. Solid Reuben. Onion roll, boar's head turkey. Uh-huh. Tell oh, me. No, no, it's not boar's head. They used Deeds and Watson. Keep going. Bacon. Yeah. Uh, pepper jack. I get I got pepper jack instead of cheddar. Uh-huh. And yeah. a nice brown mustard. Yeah. Lettuce and tomato. <sighs> oh, dude. I'm just filled up. So... I said it sounds a lot like Brit kids cosplaying as cowboys. Huh, yeah, I, I see that. I said it was. It's okay. It wasn't offensive. My ears until it kicked into double time. That yeah. And I was like, this has to stop. <laughs> Sandwich aside, it's definitely a zero out of ten. Luckily, um, <laughs> one thing that shocked me about it was that it was released by Slash Records. Yeah. I, I don't thought... know if that's a label that. It's one of the labels I grew up with, and like it gave me like a, a bunch of bands I really enjoy were on Slash Records. Like Faith No More was a Slash Records band. Yeah. Did, I'm like, didn't he call it one of his favorites of the label? 
Yeah. Something like that? I mean, everything's got an audience. I mean, I'm not going to knock the guy because he likes this shit that's different for me, but yeah. that record stunk. I said, I'd probably never listen to this again. That song, Lucky Day, put me to sleep. And the last song, I Don't Go Out Much, was so hokey, I almost skipped it. Entirely. You got to the last song? Yeah, because I was skipping. Oh, okay. Like, one minute at a time, I was like, eh. They, eh. Look, the thing that first knocked me off of it was they have this, was, country music does this songs where they have, like, the, the title is, like, a girl's name. Yeah. And, like, the first song was something like Dear Audrey or some shit like that. Something like that. And I was just like, nope. <laughs> and then, like, it started playing. I was like, yep, reinforce that nope. Uh, that's just, no. No, no. Big old no. Now, the other record uh-huh. he recommended. Stabbing. Yes. Extirpated Mortal Process. I gave it a 9 out of 10. I agree with that. And second to that, it's definitely 9 out of 10. I, the first thing I wrote down, vocals, vocals, vocals. Yeah. That fucking vocalist is sick. Yeah. My uh, bu- my buddy Devin uh, ranked, like, his favorite singers, like, for some publication. And he posted uh, she was one of them. Yeah. And I was also shocked to learn that that was a girl. I knew that beforehand, but I knew that before I heard the band. And then when I actually listened to the band, I was like, okay. I was like, holy right. shit. And then yeah. I, 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 like, I, I found out who she was, and I was like, oh, she's also an extremely talented tattoo artist, too. Okay, so that's I didn't know cool. all that. I said, how about that breakdown in the first song? Dude, I don't know if you got the vibes from it, too. Like, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's the same amount of like, oh, shit, this is great excitement I got the first time I heard the first Skinless record. Mm-hmm. I can see that. It is just like it was because that was like the one of the first death metal albums I abs like straight up <clears throat> death metal bands mm-hmm. I ever fell in love with. Like because I was always like a casual before that. Yeah, and I was just like, this Yo. is fuck. And I listened to it three times on the first sit down, uh, the stabbing record. I listened to it twice in a row. Yeah, it was fun. It's really fucking good. And then I said, how about that breakdown in the third song? <laughs> A couple of times we've talked about the polished thing. Yeah. The record is produced just to the right amount. Pro, but not overly polished. Yeah, not the, to where they neuter it. The yeah. drums even sound real slash realistic. It yeah. sounds like shit I could actually play if yeah. I tried real hard. Not like, as opposed to a computer. Let's see. Slash Throat Awakening. Breakdown. The I think it was the last song. There was like a um, a displaced mega bell over the double bass, and I just What's thought a mega bell. It's a, it's a ride with a bell that's fucking huge, and it sounds like Kong Kong okay. instead of a ting ting. So the double bass was going, but he but the bell was going ting 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 ting, and I was like, that's fucking cool. Yeah, it. I fuck perfectly balanced. One thing that is this is not a knock. But it's not their fault or anything like that. Is that type of metal bands is with just the word salad fucking song titles. It's like you don't need to have 97 syllables in a song title. Yeah. It's like we get it. You probably cut up people, fuck them, eat them. <laughs> We're and I'm stab them. And I'm there <laughs> for it. I'm with you. I'm a fan. I'm all about it. It's like, but can you just be like Maybe just do one thirty-seven point Scrabble word and not like three <laughs> per title. Extirpated. Like, I still have no idea what the fuck extirpated means. <laughs> I have no fucking clue. <laughs> but that record—that's that was a fucking great record. If I had known about that before I made my, you know, best of twenty twenty-two, that probably would have made the cut. No less than an honorable mention. Yeah, definitely. That shit was fucking awesome. I said it was. It's perfectly balanced, not front loaded, not back loaded. Flows just right. Yeah, perfect length. Yeah, I said they're fans of the bait and switch breakdown. Like yeah. you think the song's over, and then they throw an unexpected, not gratuitously heavy, yeah. over the top breakdown, but they throw one in the end there, and I was like, oh yeah. And they're not really cookie cutter breakdowns either. No, they're legit good. Yeah, as fuck. So yeah, that was. That made up for him suggesting the rank and file record. Yeah, has entered my rotation. Yeah, and him being a sleepy beepy one of you <laughs> sitting with us. 
Ding, we ding, love ding. you, Phil. You yeah. One eyebrow freak. Phil. Phil. But uh, now, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I'll go first only in that I didn't do the extra credit. I did not find the Judgment Night soundtrack. You couldn't find that? I didn't look. Fair enough. It was only <laughs> extra credit anyway. Not a big fucking deal. I'd like to look into it anyway. It sound, the sound, the mashup concept sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, so. they and someone tried to re, they tried to recreate that shit a couple years after that. I believe it was the Spawn soundtrack. It was a similar thing, but instead of rap, it was metal and techno artists. Mm. I remember one was like, mm. uh, it was like Slayer and like Atari Teenage Riot, and like Metallica and something like that. It stunk. Yeah, but. Yeah, the Judgment Night soundtrack is pretty cool, but I think s- someone listening to it now might find most of it pretty dated anyway. Mm-hmm. But if you want to do it, do it. But it wasn't like the main thing. Um, Why don't you go? Superstition. I fucking forget the name of the album I've written down. It's in one of these pages. It's long. I almost remember it. <laughs> Fuck me. I'm taking up time. Son of a bitch. It's a 2021 release, I believe. 2019. 20, oh, yeah. it's, pra- it's practically old. Anatomy of Unholy Transformation. See? Long. That's the one. You could have just done, like, Unholy Transformation. You didn't have to add an extra word. Yeah. I don't. Maybe I don't give a shit about what the anatomy is It's it. good. It Here's the thing. Like, I like 20 Bucks Spin as a label, but a lot of their bands are beginning to sound very similar to each other. And mm-hmm. it definitely has that... 20 bucks spin feel to it well that's how you can pick out like we can do things like suggest bands to each other yeah and be like oh it's it's a 20 bucks spin band we'd be like okay i know what that means that what that means for me when someone says that is like it may not blow my fucking skirt up over my head but i will at least be entertained well i won't i won't regret my time with it now this record it was good i enjoyed it but i wasn't really blown away with fair i mean i mean it's, it's good like just kind of like classic style death metal yeah it's definitely solid if nothing else um the fucking like the echo on the vocals I'm getting kind of tired of that mm. but it, it was good it was a good record um yeah i just does it have staying power is it good enough to listen to again now i if i find it's still on my ipod yes i still use an ipod i'm old i will listen to it again like, if it's like, oh, I'll just listen to that. I'll check it. It'll stay in rotation, but it'll probably be, like, after I'm tired of, like, the other three things I'm constantly listening to. <laughs> but I, I I will still give it a solid seven, seven and a half, because it is a good record, but it's just, it doesn't really stick out much, but it was still good enough that it, like, someone's like, I need something new to listen to. Oh, check out that Superstition record. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. It'll... It'll it'll wet your whistle for thirty fucking minutes. If you're a fan of death yeah. metal, you'll yeah. like it. Yeah, you'll like it. If nothing else, you'll like it. You won't be running down the streets screaming to the top of your lungs how great it is to everybody. But it's a good record. Yeah, it's a good record. Let me uh, can I tell you how I discovered them? You sure can. So I went and saw Two Mold at Kung Fu Necktie. Yeah. And I wish I heard that fart. I wish I didn't feel it. <laughs> I I, saw, uh, crack. I went and saw Two Mold, and they were direct support for them on the tour. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know them from anybody. I just went in cold. I love that though. And yeah. And I was like, wow, that band was fucking great live. And the guitar player sing- is the singer. Now, if they were on a show that I was at, I would definitely make a point to watch him. And if like someone's like, hey, do you want to go see Superstition? They're playing like. I don't know, Baltimore or Philly or even fucking New York. Whatever. I'd be like, yeah, why not? You I'll know? definitely see them again. Because yeah. some bands, sometimes the the record doesn't capture their live energy. I would say that. The live yeah. show was fucking... The live show was what made me like, I'm going to look... I bought I bought a shirt immediately and then I was like, I'm listening to that record regularly. Yeah. So, but... And then I saw Two Mold, so I was like... Yeah. Ho- I was like, holy fucking shit. Yeah, I mean... You know the that's, dr- that's Did you know that band? The drummer is the singer. Yeah, that's fucking that's bananas some, that's to some me. Phil Collins shit, bro. Dude, n- <laughs> fuck those people. <laughs> you can't be that good at two I, things. It's like drummers, singers. I always blew my mind. Like it made sense to me. Like, like I just brought up Phil Collins. In his band, he was the drummer and the singer. Was a um, Genesis. But if you listen to the drumming on a Genesis record. 
you're like, oh yeah, that dude could definitely sing while playing that whack yeah, it's fucking just beat. Groove. Now, if somebody comes out with like steady, like non-triggered double bass, blasting and all that, and then fills and yeah, fills hands just fucking blurring across the set, and still manages to fucking a keep a mic in front of them and like get the words out. Yeah, that's impressive to me. That's next level shit. For yeah, sure. yeah. Now, what what was your next home? That, that does bum me out, though, is I think I like, in a live setting, I like a, a front man. Yeah. Or a woman, but, and that's, and like, if it's a guy playing guitar and singing, cool. If someone's playing bass singing, cool. But I've seen bands where the drummer is the singer, and for some reason, it takes away from the live setting for me. I don't know why that is, or why that would be. Probably because half the time, I'm like, I can't see this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. They are way back there. Where, like... Usually on a riser, like too. a guitar player and a bass player, they are still... Up front. Quote, unquote, front woman man. Fronting. Yeah. So you're still up front, whereas the drummer, like... You're backing. His son's <laughs> back there. Like, holy shit. Yeah. I thought you were a laptop. But, uh... <laughs> I've seen that, too, by the way. Yeah, but, same. Uh, I've seen Fulci. Um, <laughs> Fulci's fucking sick, though. I've seen quite a few bands where the fuck there was like one person a laptop and Mortu- I, I don't hate it anymore. Godflesh, Mortician. Oh, the first time I saw it was this really shitty band from the early aughts called Sex Positions. Mm, nice. A, a Death Wish band. They were fucking awful. But yeah, I saw Godflesh at Death Fest one year and it was just two guys in a drum machine and they had like a whole like thing screen behind them showing like movie clips and shit. But um, anywho, that doesn't matter. Uh, speaking of movies, though, you you threw me for a fucking loop with the next thing you gave me, which mm-hmm. was weird, the Al Yankovic story. Because the way you describe it, you describe it as a biopic. And so what I figured it was like, when I think biopic, I think dramatized versions of a documentary. Uh-huh. Where, like, the information's accurate. Yeah. And uh, it's just dramatized. You know, like something like that jerk-off movie, uh, the Freddie Mercury one. Uh, that's one of my mom's favorite movies movie of all time. fucking stinks. Janice, I love you, but that movie fucking blows. There was a time when she would watch that movie twice or three times a week. Now, if it was shirtless Rami Malek without those teeth, I'd be fucking baiting to that thing constantly. You can watch Poppy on if you want that. I don't even know what the fuck that is. It's a movie no. about prison that he's in. It's good. Oh, it's about prison. I mean, there's yeah. some cheeks in there getting clapped out. Uh, Charlie oh. Hunnam. Oh, 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 no! Fuck Charlie Hunnam. <laughs> no, why? Because he's a sons, of, he's sons of Anarchy made white people that much more obnoxious <laughs> while it was on the air. So fuck Charlie fucking Hunnam, asshole. I'm sure he's a great dude, but fuck him anyway. He's a fucking uh, 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 an over there guy yeah. talking like an American. He's Australian that annoys, or some shit. That annoys the piss out of me. And this actually ties into the movie that you signed me. Oh yeah, Daniel Radcliffe. It annoys the piss out of me <laughs> how well British actors can nail American accents. Not only Amer- nail an American accent, but also make it location specific and nail it. Mm-hmm. And then you see our fucking dumb fucks that we <laughs> sent over. You ever want a fucking good laugh? There's a movie that came out years ago called Blood Diamond. Oh, man, with, uh, 2006. With, with Leonardo Leo. DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. Listen to him fumble his way through a South African accent. Fucking, <clears throat> what a piece it's of like, shit. And you're he's one of our best and brightest. Uh, you, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I watched a Saturday Night Live with James McAvoy where he fucking completely nailed the Philadelphia accent. Like, he sounded like goddamn Jordan Burke, for Christ's sakes. That's funny. And it was just, fuck, I'm like, and I got mad. I was like, these fucking they, he's appropriating you these fucking <laughs> Brits are fucking just nailing our not only like the American accent but region specific American accents and we and our best and brightest our pits and our fucking DiCaprio's are just like oh be me you're like fuck off dude God anyway damn it so back to, back on track um you sign me weird the Yankovic story so the way you described it to me I was expecting a biopic like um, Bohemian Rhapsody or uh, uh, what's the other John one? Rocket Man or whatever. I was like, okay, I expect something like that. Dramatized. But, but obviously yeah. silly because it is about Weird Al and he's a silly fucking dude. 
And so, like, the first 20 minutes of the movie, I was just like... You think it's going that way, I'm don't like, you? No, I was like, that's what I was in the mindset for. And I was just like, what the fuck did Tom give me, dude? It's like, <laughs> what? Like, But once I wrapped my head around it is when there's a part where Hal himself shows up as a... He's a record as exec. a character. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is just one big goof. And then once I figured out, like, it took me like a good 20 minutes which is way too fucking long for any <laughs> rational person to, like I was this is a weird owl we're talking yeah. about here and once like I got into like what it really was happening there I fucking was like it was a complete about face for me I fucking fell in love with it like first off when he just s- starts <laughs> my favorite running gag of the whole thing is that his dad worked in a factory and no one knows what the factory made the factory yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> When I fucking and like and his roommates were fucking great. Like, his band, oh yeah, they're like I didn't even know you guys played, and all three of them played like their exact <laughs> instruments. The exact- yeah, you're just like, but when Madonna came in, and that part, and uh, when he, like the running gag was that he wrote "Eat It." Before Michael Jackson came out with "Beat It," uh huh, and then everyone's like, that "Everybody's like, I loved your parody of that Michael Jackson song," and just how angry he would get about it. <laughs> like that was funny, but just like the whole thing of like Madonna being a succubus, yes, and like his like relationship with her, just it was just fucking hysterical. And that movie also had one of the greatest endings of a comedy movie I had ever fucking seen. He's just up there on a stage accepting like this achievement award never, and he just starts pissing his pants. And then there's a dude in the crowd with like oh oh shit spoiler alert there's a dude in the crowd with a machine gun who just stands up and assassinates Weird Al, and it just closes the movie and says Weird Al was assassinated at the blah 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 awards in 1985. And- I was just like, when it ended like that, I was just like, this is fucking brilliant. I love this to death. And then that I saw, when the, I, I didn't know, like, I went in cold. Then when the credits started rolling, it was like written by Al Yankovic. I was like, oh, yes, okay. Yes, exactly. Okay, I got you. He did, yeah, he did the whole thing. Yeah, but the way you had it hyped up for me, I was expecting like a legit biopic or biopic, however you want to say the word. That's exactly why I yeah. undersold it. Like, I wanted it to like hit you. Like the fucking stupid Elvis movie that came out and all that horse shit. Blow me. But I was just like, once I finally got my head around what I was actually watching, I was an instant fan. And like the... For some reason, comedy movies aren't something I, I I really watch a lot anymore. Well, guess what? They don't fucking make them anymore. Yeah, but that was fucking hysterical. Yeah, it's that, the funniest movie I've seen in a long one time. One of my favorite things ever is when he's at that party and uh, Sue's out with those, the, the bassist from The Doors is like, do you want to come open for us from Live Aid? And he's just yeah. like, hard pass! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was fucking hysterical. And They're Conan like, O'Brien is <laughs> Andy Warhol. I was like, yeah, it was it was pretty There's fucking. So many. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. I would give that movie an eight out of ten. Um, yeah, just go into it knowing that it's complete and utter absurdity and silliness. Classic just, weird. Al. Don't prepare yourself for like facts or any of that shit, or like actually learning something new about Weird Al. You're just gonna learn what you always knew about him that the dude's batshit. It's fun only. Yeah. Like, it's... That movie was actually funnier than his records and shit. Like, his records, all those jokes, they're all dated. Yeah. You know what I mean? But after watching that, I'm like, dude, Weird Al should make more fucking movies. If he's... Yo, if he finds himself in, like, dude, making a... Like, making movies now, yo, I'm in, dude. I'm fucking... The motherfuckers clearly got the comedy thing <laughs> uh, down. Also... I fucking love Harry Potter, dude. I've I've only seen the one movie, The Prisoner of Afghanistan. <laughs> yes, I know I'm saying it wrong, but I love fucking Harry Potter. He's one of the best child stars that oh, got um, old ever. U- Uzbekistan. Yeah, Uzbekistan, exactly. <laughs> Islamabad, but um, Islam good. <laughs> it's because you know a llama they spit their root out anyway, but. 
I love that like a lot of child stars try to pivot to become like, you know, take me seriously now, you know, I only do serious films now. Or they where he's just like well, the stuff I've seen him in lately has been the weirdest shit ever. I'm like, this kid's cool. Mm-hmm. This kid's like, yeah, I could probably go for some serious like drama or some serious award winning movie by this ace director. It's like, no, I'm gonna do a weird owl movie and some horror movie where I grow horns. And you're like, all right, Harry Potter, you're a fuck cool dude. Think about what an honor it would be to be cast as Weird Al, though, in his his biopic. Yeah. You, and, are you, like, who wouldn't be like, it, yes, sign me up now, please. And also look at Weird Al's like, yo, some, like, one of the biggest child stars of your generation, my generation, has just agreed to play you in your biopic that you made by yourself on a obviously low budget. We got, we got the, yeah. we got the green light from yeah. Radcliffe. Like, he... Yo, Harry Potter's probably the coolest child star since that fucking Frodo kid, uh, Elijah Wood. Yeah, those are like those. Those are like the goats of fucking child actors. I got older. Honestly, yeah, he's like the one for me. Yeah, dude. So Harry Potter. I'm sorry, I never watched any of your movies, but the one. But yeah, you're my fucking dude for playing Weird Al. I'm glad the Weird Al movie went over well. Though. Yeah, uh, it's it. In case you didn't listen to the last episode when I recommended it, it's free on the Roku app. If so, if you have a Roku device, it's, yeah, it's apparently already Roku there. has movies and shit TV on it. I I didn't know I that. I just thought it was a thing. I plugged it into the back of my TV and it gave me shit. Exactly, it's free. Yeah. So watch it. It's hilarious yeah. as fuck. I actually recommended it to my boss like the next day because nice. it's like really dumb, dumb comedy. I was like, then this is hey, right up his alley. Up your alley, dude. Now, my homework was two records, and I'll start with Helms Ali because I just listened to it, like within the last couple days. Right. Bless you. What um, album did they give you? Weatherhead. Weatherhead. Yes. Um, when the music started, I was like, "Hmm, what's about to happen?" Because it's kind of dark, mm-hmm. and then the singing kicked in, and I was like, "This, oh." Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. Yeah. I smiled and I said, yeah. this is very good. Yeah. And and then um, a couple of songs later, I th- I guess there's like a guy singer too. Yeah. Or maybe a guitar player or something who does background vocals. Yeah. And I was like, his voice is okay, but I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a guy plays guitar and sings and the there's two girls in the band that sing. Yeah. One's the bassist, one's the drummer, and they... All three of them share, but it's mainly the bassist. That makes sense. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I didn't get to listen to it as much as I'd like to. I didn't get to write down a lot. In fact, I had I had it <laughs> I had it handwritten because yeah. I was doing it at work. But I liked I enjoyed yeah. it quite a bit, and I'll try it again. I gave it a seven. As long as you get to track four. Track four is my favorite. Music uh, Music Box is great. Song. Music Box. I I forgot to write the yeah. name. I love that song. Yeah, and the a, first one. That's my favorite one. Yeah, the first one's great too. And if you find yourself on YouTube and have like three minutes to spare, there's a music video for the song. I think it's called like 418 or something like that. It's like the third track maybe. Numbers. But it is a perfect repre- It's a It's a goof on Beavis and Butthead. It's them all, like, drawn as Beavis and Butthead characters, doing, like, the Beavis and Butthead dances and shit. And then it's interspersed <laughs> with them, like, reenact, actually, like, live-action reenacting scenes from, like, 80s and 90s music videos and shit. It's 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 a great music video. <laughs> like, it's them, like, doing, like, the when Beavis and Butthead used to stage dive off their couch and shit. It's, like, them doing that, and it's fucking hysterical. I want to watch that. It is. It's pretty great. 7 out of 10. Solid. Oh, nice. Solid. There are other materials also very good, but that was the one I had been listening to at that point in time. I was like, I would recommend this one. Now, my other assignment was uh, a demo by the band Caustic Wound. Yeah. Grinding Terror. Yeah. Is what it's called. Now, I was familiar with the band because, like you said, their other album artwork is also white with black. Yeah. So I had them, I did have them too confused. The record I had heard before, I didn't love that much. Oh, was it Death Posture? That one. Yeah. Because it, it came into my, my daily mixes a lot. Yeah. And it would kind of throw off my flow because I wasn't enjoying it. Yeah. I liked the demo way more. Me too. That's why I gave you the demo instead of the full length. 
the full length I would have passed on because I've heard it yeah. before too. But I had to search. I had the only way to listen to it is on YouTube, I think. Yeah. And not to be like, I wrote it down not to be one of those people, but I prefer the demo to the full length that I heard on Spotify more than a couple times. Yeah. The songs are great. I love the demo level production. Yeah. And if it was available on more stuff, I would listen to it regularly. I think it might be on Bandcamp too. But that's also still not as something good as like Spotify or whatever like that. Yeah, but. because all like ninety percent of my other music that I listen to lives on Spotify. Oh, yeah. So it's the obvious the naturally well, well, easiest I, thing. I would recommend full length just because, you know, A, there's more songs to listen to and Yeah. That demo was fucking that. good but though. But that that is like one of the glaring things where like the demo just smokes the full length. Yeah, definitely. Seven and a half out of ten. Yeah. It was pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fucking great. I, that first song is just such a ripper, dude. Like the end of it is like fucking makes me want to like fucking serve shit sandwiches to homeless people. <laughs> but, uh, um, I hope this leaves your lexicon after this ever. Oh God, I'll probably forget it. You know, I'm not, <laughs> Thank God. I'm not very smart. <laughs> It's such a horrific thing. I don't know why it's sticking with me as much. <laughs> because it's it's ghastly. Yeah. Chicken bugger. <laughs> I mean, that hasn't left. Oh, I'm not, don't get me started on chicken burger. Don't. <laughs> Clayton would never, <laughs> in a million years, serve yeah. anything but quality. Exactly. Okay? That's true. Shout out to at Clayton's World on Instagram. It's fucking right. It's the best follow ever. Australians are kings of entertainment. We're I mark my fucking words. We get a sponsorship on this podcast. I'm spending money on one thing and one thing only. A trip to Australia to hang out with Clayton and eat a chicken burger? Fucking right. Dude. I want him to take me to all his favorite chicken burger spots. Hey, we're, get, we're getting a fucking, we're getting off track, dude. Now, I've been fucking up lately. I haven't been bringing comedy to the table. Because, you know, I've just been on a dry spell. Mm-hmm. I think I've been listening to so much of it that I kind of had to, you know, step aside from it. You know, I've been... Worrying, I've been just listening to more music and reading more books and shit. So, Nerd. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so this week, I did bring a record for you to listen to. Mm-hmm. But I, also, I brought you two comedy specials. Ooh. And, and there's Brand Spank and Nil. Both of them. I hope one of them okay. is not what I think it is. It probably is. Hmm. It came out within like the last day or two. Seen it. Cheeseburger. Yes. Andrew Santino Cheeseburger. Seen it. All right. Well, next episode we're gonna fucking talk about it. That's fucking we're gonna give it. We we'll give it the breakdown that we gave Ari Shafir's Jew. Yeah. To, but in the meantime, everybody should go on Netflix. I know you all have it. Andrew Santino Cheeseburger. Honestly, one of the best titles. Yes. Like, some people just have the most douchey titles to their fucking specials ever. But just I saw like I didn't know what it was gonna be called, and it just popped up. I saw him on YKWD, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, I'll get my specials out. And I was like, all right. So went and go look at Netflix, and I was like, fucking cheeseburger? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in. Let's let's talk about it next episode. Yeah. I'm excited to talk but about that at length. This other special I, I bringeth you mm-hmm. is by a British comedian named Adam Rowe. His name's familiar to me. Uh, he did an episode of Flagrant, but he's mostly... Uh, just a UK guy. He's been to the States, but not on a regular basis. He's still somewhat new. Um, he also is one of the hosts of the Have a Word podcast, which is pretty decent. Is that R-O-E? R-O-W-E. Oh. And the name of the special is Imperious. I-M-P-E-R-I-O-U-S. Oh, and I almost got it right. And it's on YouTube. And now, you will have to... Accustom yourself to his very thick Liverpool accent. Eh, whatever. And some of the, the British slang that threw me off a little bit. But it's a great fucking special. I mean, I listen to Ricky Gervais. How bad could it be? Ricky Gervais is way more clear than Adam Rowe. All right. Um, but yeah. Hey, what a picky fucking and, uh, and after hearing it, like, I've trying to been doing like... Uh, I started following him and his podcast on uh, Instagram... And I'm trying to like kind of deep dive into seeing what else is going on in the UK that I don't know. Because look, UK, when it comes to UK comedy, I don't really know much. Mm-hmm. I know Ricky Gervais. I know Jimmy Carr. 
I know Daniel Sloss, and now I know this guy. So I'm like, there's got to be other fucking just heaters over there. The good ones keep moving over here. Yeah. Call him Terrell. That's you know, one. Fucking call him Terrell. <laughs> call him Terrell. <laughs> so, yeah. Ricky. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Adam Rowe Imperius. It's on YouTube. Check it out. Now, we had a discussion, something I thought would be fun for you and I to do as far as records is to bring each other our favorite, favorite. records and not just, you know, casual. I mean like the, like our favorite record, mm-hmm. our favorite album by our favorite band. And it's really, you know, get to the nitty gritty here. So I've brought this album up before. I think I actually brought it up last episode with Phil. Cause he's a fan as much as I am. The band's called helmet. It's my favorite band in the entire fucking world. And the album's called aftertaste. Oh, I now, thought you were going to go Betty. See, everybody thinks that. Oh, but it's not your favorite. Okay, keep going. Betty's sorry. a great album. Do not get me wrong. In in the meantime, great album. Or meantime, but, it's a great album. But this one, Betty's a great album. But one of my problems with Betty is like it's, each song is kind of like a, almost a different genre sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's still like good, like similar enough that it all ties together as a good album. But a lot of it's like, you get some really weird songs like mixed in the middle. Aftertaste to me is a more cohesive album. It's not as experimental as Betty or even Me Time or any of the early shit. But it's just a more cohesive album and I like the songs better. One thing I don't like about it that I do like more about Betty is the drum sound. I think they're a little flat on Aftertaste, but... He is still, John Stanier is still one of the best heavy music drummers I've ever heard. Helmet's been through a lot of drummers. Well, they, this is the OG guy. This okay. was his last album he did with them. Gotcha. Because he's one of the fucking best. There's a, there's a later Helmet record that I found only because John Tempesta was drumming on it. And it was, it was like a, sil- it's like a silver album cover. It's called Size Matters. That's the yeah. one. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It's good. I dude, I love all their albums. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and the fucking f- Size Matters, the basis was actually on that was uh Frank Bello from Anthrax. And the tour they did after that record was recorded, the bass player was uh Jeremy Shadowlane from uh, Handsome. Handsome Singer was the bass player on that tour. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Aftertaste to me is just it's the last album of the classic Helmet lineup. It's a more cohesive and album than Betty is and I there's not a single song I skip on it whereas Betty has two or three songs I will skip over they're good songs but I'll still skip over them on a casual listen this album is perfect to me and it's my favorite album song wise lyric wise and everything and if you listen to anything I've done musically you can see how much shit I steal from that band hmm. yeah it's ridiculous like that it's my favorite album, and that's the album I bring to you for homework. Helmet's Aftertaste. What's the newest Cancer Priest record called? The white, white and red one. The white and red one. That's the newest, exactly what it's called. The, the white new, and red one. Oh yeah. What uh, buys brain stems? Not Cancer Priest, but if you listen to Iron Price shit, I was gonna say I, I can totally hear the helmet influence. In if you listen to Iron Price, Cancer yeah. Priest. Iron Price, yeah. You can definitely see where the because Matt, our main songwriter, is also. As big a helmet fan as I am, I think he'd go Betty over Aftertaste, but Dead and Buried too. Oh yeah. Mm, okay. Oh I mean... yeah, dude. Just me though. <clears throat> Just delivery. Mm-hmm. And like the rest of the guys, they they fuck. Other than Matt, most other people I play music with don't like that band. They're just not into Helmet. All right. Which is fair, you know. You like what you like, but it's I, I'm know. I'm hard pressed to find a musician who doesn't like Helmet though. Uh, John John Lowe, who just recently joined Cancer Priest, was after Matt the only other person I played music with that actually liked Helmet. Ugh. Well, the Outlaw only likes new metal. Oh, the Outlaw is the Outlaw. Yeah, and Evan is just he's also feeding people shit sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, apparently and beating. Never mind. But um, <laughs> <laughs> and Evan Evan just he likes metal. Okay, you know, a little else. So yeah, I skew his, his shit. I skew heavy on metal also, so yeah. I, I understand. I do um, too, but okay. yeah, that's my favorite record of all time. Okay, until something else comes down the line, it's gonna knock my dick off. 
Okay, so so for comedy, I'm going to assign you the newest release of a one Stephen Hofstetter. Give me one second. And it's kind of like since uh, as long as a person is funny enough, I think we can both stomach H O F S T E T T A R or E R. Almost nailed it. E R. E R. I had a friend's last name was Hofstetter. Steve Hofstetter. The the special is on YouTube and it's called The Recipe. And I think we can both stomach uh, 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 a, a a special that skews kind of one man showy as long as it's funny enough. Yeah. This one is funny. It's got yeah. It's got to be engaging and actually funny. That motherfucker is really funny. Yeah. So like a Colin Quinn one man show is is funny. I mean, you, a Hassan Minaj one. He's like, you're just telling a story and it's not funny. However, Hassan Minaj is touring the hour that he's doing right now currently about the testicular cancer that he just beat, and I saw him perform that hour in Philly. It's gonna be a fucking good special if he turns okay. it into a special. That's gonna be fun. Of course he will. That dude's almost. Why wouldn't you? Why would you make that example? Yeah, why would you avoid money? So Steve Hofstetter, the, the recipe. recipe. It's on YouTube. All right. It's How so, old is it? It's. I think it's twenty one or twenty two. Oh, okay. So it's the new special. It's it's his newest one. Okay. Yeah. Were and you going to bring up cheeseburger as well though? I was hoping that I wouldn't get assigned it because I watched it already. Well, that's why I brought two. Okay. Specials. I was like, all right, it's something. I, he probably did watch as soon as it came out. Uh, yeah. I, I stayed up just to watch it. Yeah. yeah. And let's see. Since we're assigning... You swear to God I'm going to make fun of you mm-hmm. for bringing this album to me. If it's Sublime, we're fighting. <laughs> I think I might know who the band is. I bet you do. Now... Is it three letters? Since since you're a person... I am a person. F- favorite bands are bands like, well, Helmet, but you love okay. Sweet Cobra... I do. And I know you love Clutch. I do. There's Where's this going? This there, is not where I was thinking. There's no reason you shouldn't musically like this record. Okay. Maybe not the Challenge band. Challenge accepted. Maybe not the band, okay. but the record. It's it's for people who like good guitar music. It depends on what kind of guitar music. The album is called Infiltrate, Destroy, Rebuild. Okay. And the band is CKY. I wish you were dead. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Now, you need to you need to I will. Zoom out of the fucking da 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 song. Like they have other songs and they're better than that song. That is that song, the 96 bitter being song is probably their 20th best song. I'm surprised it made someone's 20th best song. But my point is, is that that record and the record that came out in 2005 are like, they have fucking great songs on it, especially that one. It's funny that, uh, that's, they were always one of those bands to me that I was like, there's no way in hell people outside of Westchester like this band. There's no way they're, can do anything without the only reason they got anywhere is because they had the Bam Margera seal of approval. He put their but, he put them on skateboards. But apparently, well, then again, you live like twenty minutes from Westchester. So. I also used to skate with Westchester kids, yeah. and Bam was around, and oh. and he was always around at FDR back in the day too. But Bam aside, like that record is fucking great. And there's a reason I was like, I was reaching and scratching and clawing, trying to think of some other favorite no, no, to assign. And I was like, nah, fuck, fuck that. that shit. Fuck I have that. I have a CKY tattoo. Oh. I know. I know. You know what's funny? I thought I knew what you were going to go with. And what? it was another band with three letters as a name. Huh. Him? Because <laughs> they're not one of my no. favorites. I just figured this out by pissing in your house a lot of times. AFI? I, I thought it'd be AFI. Eh. I mean... That, I l- that fake vampire shit. And I was like, oh, this is probably Tom's favorite band. They're in my top ten. 
Okay, that's I big. guess, but not that high. So I was like, is it an initial band? And you're kind of like, oh. And I was like, I got the initials wrong. Mm-hmm. That's that's really weird. No, but... I, I si- will listen to it. I'm not si- going to be a fucking cunt. Since this is homework, you have to listen to I it. I do. That's, so that's the fucking rules. That's why I I'm picked that a, record. I'm not going to be a cunt about it. I mean, I got other friends that fucking like CKY. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they're my friends, but <laughs> yeah, I mean... I also maybe was skewed against that band by the fact that they were like the jackass house band. Yeah. I, I, it's tough. In my mind, like, yeah, that probably did wonders for them, but that's, it's detrimental to me. I'm like, I won't give a band a chance if fucking Bam Margera's like, yo, this is the shit. Dude. This is my brother's band, yo. I'm like, yeah, that makes me hate it even more without even hearing a note. But if if Bam was never born and this band still existed, yeah. they should have been doing stuff like other big festival rock bands, I, I guess. I don't know. I just remember going to see a, a Murder Junkie show when the bass player was there and just had like an entourage. I don't remember. I don't know the other guy's name. But. The... The, the the CKY guy who was in Murder Junkies? It no, no was, he, I don't know if he was in the band, but he was at that show. Um, Chad. Chad is the guitar, the other guitar player. The, the, the guitar player who doesn't sing. He's like a Gigi Allen super fan. Okay. I fucking well, can't that stand makes, that guy. That makes sense. I can't stand... Wait, Gigi Allen or this Chad dude? Chad. Well, this, first off... His name's Chad! Exactly. You can't like a guy named Chad. No, it's against the law, yeah. I think. It's like liking a guy named Chase or fucking Caden but <laughs> Bryant yeah, he was just walking around uh, it was some shithole venue in I want to say, it was either Phil, was it Philadelphia no I think it was Lancaster and he's had like an entourage following him around and I actually had to ask somebody I knew that I was like who the fuck, who the fuck is, this, is that? this dude he's like oh it's the dude from CKY I think he's the bass player I was like alright makes me hate that band even more no one, I'm, I don't even know who, they're one of my favorite bands. I don't even know who their bass player is. I I don't even know if it's actually their bass player. This is just what some dude at the show told me. Okay, well, whatever. So, and it, That's it, it's the, Lancaster information. You can never take that shit at face value. No, not yeah. unless it's Amish, they get uh, Amish by, market related. They get eaten by shark jets, dude. <laughs> is oh. that all you got for me this week? Is it? Must be. I don't think we'll ever know. Mm. Yeah, it's fucking all I got for you. Hit that fucking intro music. Mm.